Okay, so I'm going to show you something here by using the x-ray of the pony, which has rotated pedal bones. So what I've done is I've put this x-ray on my camber and I've put it against a horse that has a pretty good hoof. So if we take this down, let's just remove this out of the way for a moment. You can see that this foot, it's all pretty much in alignment. So we've got the, we've got P3 here, we've got the hoof wall, we've got a pretty good connection going on between the dermal and epidermal lamina. Here you've got P2, here you've got P1, here you've got the navicular bone, here's the deep digital flexor tendon running down here. This little white blob you see here, this is the navicular bursa. Here you can see this is the digital cushion. Here's the uh, start of the coronary groove down here. Here's the coronary band. So just ignore this blue line just for a second. But there you can see that that's a pretty normal looking foot inside. And if I take its hoof capsule and I bring it over the top of there, you can see this is the actual hoof capsule to this foot. So if I take my markers and I put them where the start and the end of the coronary band is, ignore this bit here because obviously it just goes slightly up a little bit when you get to the uh, lateral cartilages. If I bring this down now out of the way, you can see that that the coronary band runs just above the navicular bone. Just a tiny bit of space there. So you've got the navicular bone, you've got P3 and the bottom of P2 sat in the hoof. That's, that's how it works. If I bring that back up, you can see that, there you go. The proportions, interestingly, in all hooves, pretty much to P2 to P1, they're all pretty much the same. There is a little bit of variation, but not an awful lot. So if I take this back up now, and I've got the hoof wall in line, and, and I didn't try and do that, it's just because I have put it on the ground, level on the ground, for the way that it's been trimmed, okay? So it's sat level on the ground. But you can see that, that this hoof wall actually is in alignment with that. And if I go up and I carry on going up, you can see that this hoof wall is in alignment with the paston. So this is P2. And it's going up into the paston just before the fetlock. And this is the way that farriers are taught to trim. So they're taught to keep this in line with this. Because in the natural foot, everything is in a line. There you go. You can see that, that this wall is in a line with, with this here. It's all in decent alignment. That is what happens in the natural foot. It happens naturally. But the problem that we have is that there are so many poorly distorted hooves out there that they still use the same technique for every foot. Now, the problem that you have with that is that if you try and align an already distorted hoof capsule because it has got separation here so this is the this is you've got the dermal let me go back to here a minute this is what's happened so you've got the the dermal and the epidermal and this is separated all right so if we go up here you can see how much that has separated so she's got quite a good thickness to her hoof wall and this is the amount that's separated along here so this is her hoof wall here and that line there is denoting really where we've got quite a bit of separation going on between the dermal and epidermal lamina now people tend to think that that what's happening is because this is separating, this is causing this bone here to rotate. There is no denying there is laminitis here and we are getting separation along here. But what's happening is that because the hoof capsule is distorting and they want the hoof capsule to look normal from the outside or as normal as they can get it, they raise the heels to rotate the capsule so that it is in a line with the hoof past and axis. Can you see what I'm trying to say there? The consequence of that is by raising the heels, you raise up the whole of this back. And not only that, all of this is distorted. Everything that's inside here is now being crushed and moved and distorted because remember where I said that the coronary band runs just above the navicular bone. So if I take it and I just put it about here, which is roughly where it will be, you can see where the coronary band is running. Now you get a better impression of how high these heels are. It's all been pushed up, all the tissues inside have all been moved, the pressure's being put on the digital cushion and the deep digital flexor tendon, which runs down here. If I just 
if I just uh, take away a little bit of this and then you can just basically see where we are in alignment with the other foot. We've pretty much got P2 in alignment here. You can see that the deep digital flexor tendon runs down here and it's, it's natural places to run under P3. Now the problem you have here is that because this bone is out of alignment, you have all of the soft tissues including the DDFT, the digital cushion which you can see here is in between these palmar processes. So all of these tissues here are all out of alignment. No, we're not just talking about what's going on here, we're talking about what's going on back here. The more that you go around taking the toe off, taking the toe off, taking the toe off, trying to get this correct angle here and thereby raising the heels to rotate the hoof capsule to make it look correct from the outside, the more you start causing issues with the tissues, issues with the tissues inside. Because all of it, you can see that compared to this one that's all very relaxed here, if we push this up, this, this horse has got... You know, everything has been pushed out the back. Now, it's not exactly one for one, but you, you get a pretty good idea because there are so many constants in the horse's foot. And of course, the bony column is one of them. The problem that we have is that because of the way that this horse has been trimmed, this is why this pedal bone is in this position. Now, the traditional veterinary science says that what's going on is that this lamina is separating and therefore this is moving. Equally, they also say that this deep digital flexor tendon that's down here is pulling, pulling this pedal bone back. This is under an amount of squeeze down here now because of the displacement of what's going on inside the hoof capsule. Now, that's not what's happening at all because these don't suspend the pedal bone in its capsule. They are there, the lamina's there, so that the hoof capsule knows where it is, so that it can then grow down and can keep on growing. That's why lamina is so clever, though the way that it's connected is so that it connects here. You've got your dermal and your epidermal, it connects together so that this can keep on growing down, and that's what's basically going on. That's why lamina's there. What happens is when laminitis occurs and the hoof capsule distorts, if the trimming isn't correct, what you end up getting is you end up getting this scenario where they raise the heels. You see how high those heels are because where the coronary band is at trying to get this hoof past an axis because that's the way that they've been taught. And the result is that you have a rotated pedal bone. All right. If we go to my next slide here, you can see I've put a line in here. So this is where the, the ground is. And what we've done here, I've put P2 and P1 pretty much in alignment here. Now you can see that where this is going off, you can see that that actually now is, is actually really distorted. Now you can see it's not on the ground. We can still see that P3 is still a little bit positive but this is where we will start it is where the horse will naturally have the hard sole plane at the heels and this is already how much heel will come off and we won't be just hacking into that we will know where that heel has to come off because we're doing it to the constant of the hard sole plane we're not going to guess to try and get this all in alignment we're not going to do that and then here you see here, this is because this horse has what we call a lamella wedge and it's been removed and removed and removed. This horse has got this lamella wedge because of the separation. Now gradually over time, this will immediately put this horse into a more comfortable position because instead of being in this position where the horse is every time puts its foot down is causing real problems here, pressure here because we've got a circumflex artery that runs under the tip of the pedal bone and this has been displaced and this is squeezing this circumflex artery and all of this which is attached all around here that feeds all the corium at the bottom of here and this is all being squeezed and causing all of this to degrade hence the reason she's abscessing so once the heels are back to where they should be she's going to be in a far more comfortable position what have we got going on here a complete mess but gradually over time, this will start to sort itself out and accrete more sole here. And this is the trouble that we have with laminitics is that when they've been trimmed like this, is that they just don't have enough here. Now we knew that from when she, her foot was in this position, 
But this has all been down to trimming. This would have been there. We would have had sole going along here and wall down to the ground. But you see, that makes it look like it's got this very long toe. And then they freak out about it, so they take the toe away. And this is the result. And luckily, we're at the stage now where we can do something about this without further damage to the tip of this pedal bone. Because what happens is the more that the horse is put in this position for any length of time this begins to degrade this it's squeezing its supply it, it needs nutrition and it's squeezing all its blood supply everything's being squeezed that you've got a, a terminal arch in here where all the blood vessels are everything is displaced so it's it's a real problem and that is because of incorrect trimming that's not because She's got laminitis. She has got laminitis, but all of this displacement, that's down to incorrect trimming. So what happens is we come along and we lower those heels. We get them down to the hard sole plane. Like I said, it's not personal preference trimming. We're not guessing. We're following the horse's constants. Then we have to allow her to grow. As she starts to rehab and recover, and we're keeping the heels down, heels down, heels down all the time, the hard sole plane all the time, what will then happen is that your horse's hoof will look really distorted with this long toe and then gradually it will start to connect here as all this starts to accrete more material this bone will just start to find its natural place and gradually gradually this will grow out the horse will start to feel much much better when all this starts to settle down and all of the back of the foot starts to settle down but the only way that this will ever 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 get better is by sorting the diet out because we can help her with her hoof capsule by understanding the hoof capsule that's our job but the job of you the owner is to make sure that her diet is not overloaded with the things that were causing the laminitis in the first place and causing this separation in the first place and that means no more grass forever <laughs> no more grass no more bag feeds no more any of that just lots of really good mixed mixed species hay company movement on a little track away you go and this will improve and it will it will believe me let me tell you she can recover out of this but um it takes a concerted effort you've got the hardest job to be honest we've got the easy job okay i hope that helps